Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Oh, very steamy inside the car today. Well, you know, a lot of condensation, which is useful to know because I just brought a board, a tanker to store fuel on the farm. And if there's condensation inside the car, then there's condensation inside the tanker. So, let me, uh, now I know this is annoying because I've uploaded a load of videos lately, you may have noticed, and uh, obviously the sound quality on some of them have not been that brilliant. And that's because I'm trying to defrost the car and things like that. But fortunately, um, we do a bit of sound processing on them before we upload them. And YouTube seems to do a bit of sound processing on them as well, just to reduce the background noise. So perhaps they've got some sort of uh, uh, noise reduction uh, algorithm, you know, a bit like the headphones that do the... Uh, mind you, they can't anyway, I don't know. Anyway, see, sound quality seems to be all right by the time they get uploaded. So um, anyway, how are you, all right? <clears throat> Is there something of... Uh, February. What, uh, what's the latest? Now, I've decided to shut the practice for another two weeks. That's because uh, the COVID figures in Thane are going up and down all over the place. And uh, I'm, I'm not, it's not that we're concerned. I mean, we're fully we're PPE'd up the wazoo, but uh, my nurse is a vulnerable person. She's immunocompromised. She's worried. You know, she doesn't, she's caught between a rock and a hard place because she would rather be at home getting paid 80% or 100% of her salary for doing nothing and avoiding the risk. Or um, she has to, you know, and, and then my wife has to step into the breach and do her work effectively for nothing. Uh, or, uh, which I just don't think is fair, you know, I just don't. We did that. We did that and tried it and... It worked between March and sort of July, which and I don't. I think that was about as far as uh, we can push that. So I've told her if she goes off work again, then bearing in mind that we're a COVID-friendly workplace, and as I say, she's not. I don't think she's at a significantly higher risk uh, from from the patients we see. Um, I've told her if she, you know, she's very welcome to go off again, but. I won't be able to make her wages up to 100%, so she'll have to subsist on the 80% that the government's paying her. Um, then I'll might need to pay my wife a salary to do her job, which is not as good as, uh, obviously, well, I suppose it would be better to stay open, but, you know, bringing in family members to uh, keep your business running because the government's pretty well stopped you employing your actual workers is, is desperate isn't it so I've got to turn the blower up a bit because I'm going to be on the dual carriageway soon and I won't be able to see anything unless I demiss the windscreen so for that I do apologise so what I was going to say <clears throat> you know um, dentistry is a stressful job and you know that every dentist who works in general practice knows that Nobody who commissions dentistry knows that. Uh, nobody on the General Dental Council knows that. You know, these are all people who are fat, dumb, and happy, and uh, rather in love with their professional careers. And um, see the pathetic queue of bedraggled and usually elderly practitioners that are brought before them as the um, epitome of all that's worse with the profession and guilty by virtue of being accused. But um, I want to just share it with you a story about how a problem could, uh, could occur from, either, from the simplest thing we do. And I don't know, don't, I'm not going to argue about whether this is the simplest thing we could do, but if it's not, it's, it's damn close to it, and I'm not going to bother arguing with you over whether there's a simpler thing, because that's not the issue. The issue is how such a, you know, the tiniest thing can turn into a massive problem. So I had a patient in who came in and on the face of it she had quite good teeth, um, no fillings at all. Uh, she's in her early 20s, 21 I think, something like that, 20, 21. 
and um, she had a couple of acute uh, of occult cavities, and, and a occult cavity is a, is a cavity that only just about shows up on the the biting surface of a tooth as a dot. Uh, and you can diagnose them by sticking a probe in there and the probe gets jammed in. And when the probe gets jammed in, you know that it's uh, progressed to the point where it needs to be filled up. But the fillings are small, you know, I mean, they really are tiny. They're not, they're not pinhead size, but they're not much larger than that. So I told her, we did buy wings, and I told her that she needed a couple of these little pinhead type fillings just to knock this occult caries on the on the head and uh, explained a bit about occult caries and diet and stuff like that checked her brushing uh, did her fillings and that was fine and then about um, two weeks later she rang up and said she was still having pain from one of the teeth not both of them but uh, just one of them so we'd done the top left and the bottom right and the one on the top left had healed up fine uh, you know, or hadn't given her any trouble. And the one on the bottom right, she said, was giving her persistent pain. Now, you'll know, if you're a dentist, you'll know that, um, you know, persistent pain from a cavity the size of a pinhead is, to say the least, unusual. It's, uh, it's more likely to be coincidence than it is anything else. I think it was the top right and the bottom left, that's it. It's, a, it's the top right one she's having trouble with. And so, um, you know, of course I say, well, look, come in. Immediately you're thinking, well, you know, what could be wrong with it? Could it be, you know, it's possible. The first thing you have to do is check that the, the teeth are closing together properly. Because it's, it's not inconceivable that there might be a problem. It's not likely, but it's not inconceivable. So anyway, we got her back in. I asked her a few questions about the pain. She said it was, um, it's not there all the time. Uh, and uh, it's uh, d nothing makes it worse, nothing makes it better. Uh, she was uh, taking painkillers sometimes, uh, uh, but it was worse when well, she noticed it most when she was chewing on it. And so that's why we thought, oh, this is a, you know, this is the bite. This is this is easy. So we checked the bite, but it's nowhere near the bite. So it's not the bite. We haven't changed the bite at all. So I then got a, a cotton wool roll, which is like a cotton wool sausage, and told her to bite it between the two teeth, the one the one that I felt and the one the opposite one, and uh, to tell me if it felt, you know, if she could bite okay, comfortable on it. And she said, oh, yeah, 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 quite, quite comfortably, quite comfortably. So I'm thinking this is strange, you know, you've got a, a young girl in here, with all due respect to young women, they're not exactly, um, it's, they're, they're, sometimes they're not easy to pin down, you know, they're a bit nebulous in terms of their descriptions, um, and uh, you can't, with, with most pains, you can get a handle on what the cause is from the patient's description. So for example, if they say it's a, it's a very sharp pain, with cold that comes up with things like ice cubes and ice creams, then you know you pretty well steer towards the cause, uh, possibly over brushing. Um, if you've got a, a pain that uh, is come on and is persistent and uh, severe and sudden and related to chewing, then it may be a cracked tooth, um, even if you can't see the crack. If you've got a pain which is a dull ache, which is uh, worse at night and worse when the patient's lying down and that is not related to uh, eating or anything then you're thinking infection as the nerve has died you know so but it didn't matter how many questions I asked this girl she still couldn't really tell me anything you know all they all they say is I'm in pain you know I'm in bad pain and when you ask them, you say, look, can you tell me anything about the pain, you know, can you describe it or anything? They're like, well, I don't know really, it's difficult to describe. You know, and that's all they say, it's difficult to describe. Now the problem with um, getting a to bite on a cotton wool roll, which is, it's not a problem, it's a good diagnostic test, and I recommend it to anybody. But the problem is that um, 
I think she's uh, because she's young and she's a bit naive she's sort of uh, associated coming to see me and finally deciding to get her teeth fixed or checked uh, you know agreeing to have the filling done spending all that money um, and then uh, with, with the pain and then and what and all she's been left with is the pain yeah so that's what she's thinking I mean you can sort of see what's going through these people's heads so like it or not you know and although she hasn't said so much she thinks I'm responsible she thinks that she's thinking in the back of her mind if I hadn't gone to the dentist if I hadn't if I just done what I thought was a bad idea and and stayed away from a dentist I wouldn't have had all this trouble and so my my you know what I was actually doing the right thing by staying away from the dentist although I didn't realize it at the time I've been stupid to come in and and try and do the right thing so anyway <clears throat> what you do is where, where you think that there's an association in the patient's mind between your filling and the problem then there's a simple thing to do and it is very simple with a very very small filling and that is you get the patient numb and you just take the filling out and you put in some sort of temporary filling like a zinc oxide eugenol dressing or something something that's got a you know 200 year track record <coughs> excuse me of, of sort of being having a very calming effect on the teeth now I'm not saying that the filling is um, incapable of causing symptoms I mean there are some rare cases where you know most of which I've never seen where in theory a, a tiny little white filling could cause a problem one is where um, the patient might for example be allergic to the filling material uh, most unlikely or where uh, we uh, put the filling material into what turned out to be quite a deep cavity quite close to the nerve without lining it and, and we don't do that uh, we always use lining so so uh, at the moment the filling the trouble is the filling is right down the bottom of my list of possible <laughs> problems but it's right at the very top of her list and it's that disparity between our two uh, lists of potential reasons for her pain that is causing the trouble right so we adjusted the uh, <coughs> uh, we adjusted the check we checked the bite and it wasn't fine so didn't really need adjusting so uh, then I had a chat with her and I said look I don't think it's the filling so then she that leads to the inevitable question well what is it then you know if you can't if you can't if you don't accept my perfectly reasonable expert <laughs> assertion that it's your filling that caused the pain then I need you to come up with another assertion that appears perfectly reasonable to me as to what is doing it. And when you say to the patient, well, I don't know, or at the moment it's impossible to say, of course then uh, they think they've got you on the back foot. Not only do they think they've got you on the back foot, they think you are um, useless or next to useless and possibly incompetent and and possibly uh, covering up for your incompetence in, in placing a filling, which is, uh, you know, where, where they usually put it, it's like too close to the nerve or something, you know, they've got all these phrases. Anyway, so I said to her, look, we, we had a chat and I said, look, it could be a sinusitis, it could be your wisdom teeth pushing on your teeth, although her wisdom teeth are through, so it's not like it's, not like it's an unerupted wisdom tooth that's pushing on it. Um, I said, there's like, there are a million, it could be over brushing. I said, what, have you ever been told that you grind your teeth? Uh, and um, she said, oh yeah, I've got a, like a, a lifelong history of grinding my teeth. So I said, well, it could be that you've started grinding your teeth again, if you're under stress, you know. So <clears throat> she was quite happy to leave it on the basis that uh, she'd had it checked and um, re she'd been reassured and um, that we'd said it might it was possibly the grinding. Anyway, she went away and did uh, obviously did a lot of googling and uh, decided that uh, because she'd never had this sort of pain from grinding her teeth, therefore it couldn't be grinding that was causing the pain, which is an argument I never really 
understand, you know, this this argument that <clears throat> on Earth, uh, you know, that, that something can't happen because it hasn't happened so far. Patients use this argument a lot, you know. Uh, they they eat a lot of sugar and then they get a filling and you say the filling's because you've been eating sugar and they say, well, I've been eating sugar for years. <laughs> so why should I get a filling now? You know, I don't understand this argument. Patients use it a lot. Anyway, so she, she basically googled uh, uh, bruxism and that and decided that that wasn't the problem and she'd also uh, had a chat with her friends probably um, at college or whatever and decided that uh, an x-ray is when when there's an unexplained pain in a tooth the dentist always takes an x-ray so she wrote back to me and said well uh, do you think we ought to take an x-ray now, and this is the crux of this story. So this is where, as, as uh, Tom Hanks said in Saving Private Ryan, we get into the realms of the surreal. Because there you've got, you've, the patient has stepped over a line there into trying to micromanage their own case by, by telling you what the problem is and, and telling you what diagnostic tests they think you ought to carry out. <coughs> Excuse me talking like this is uh, difficult. I can't carry a glass of water with me in the car. So, um, <clears throat> so I then wrote back and said uh, very politely that uh, I didn't think an x-ray would be of any use because uh, you know, the criteria are that you don't expose people to radiation because there's a minuscule uh, possibility that it will affect their general health and <clears throat> that um, I didn't uh, you know and there has to be a reasonable prospect that a you'll find something and b it'll have a bearing on their treatment and I didn't think there was any of those things uh, were, were likely bearing in mind we just taken bite wings in November right which is like six weeks ago so <clears throat> I mean you know, you could say, well, why don't you take a periapical of the six to see if there's a massive grey area on it, you know. Well, I, I'm not, I'm not going to start doing, I'm not going to start throwing mud at the wall to see if it sticks. You know, <clears throat> I'm going to try and just diagnose this rationally. And unfortunately, the only thing that <clears throat> ever helps is time. You know, you have to give this problem time to see, <clears throat> does it get worse, does it get better, does it get um, to stay the same and um, so now you know and I finished off by recommending that she possibly get a second opinion because um, you know the, what's the first thing a dentist going to do if she goes to see them and says Mr Watson's done a filling and I've been in pain ever since um, but I don't want to I don't want to let him take the filling out right which is illogical I don't want to let him take the filling out, but I, I just want to know what the trouble is. And he'll say, well, I'll take an x-ray. So there we are. So, But she'll end up having to pay another dentist, won't she? Another exam fee, plus possibly an x-ray fee, which we don't charge for. And then um, she'll have got a wish and she'll have got her x-ray. But <clears throat> there's, there's a, a multitude of reasons why. I mean, it could be post-operative pain from the local anaesthetic. It could be um, could be mental. Honestly, it could be uh, it could be just teenage angst about the fact that this tooth has had some decay in it and it's been drilled and it possibly hasn't taken to being drilled all that brilliantly. And and she may have a tiny, tiny little pain, a tiny little pain, something that you and I wouldn't even mention. Uh, but to her, at 20 years old, you have no context. Do you know what I mean? You don't know, how can you say what a tiny pain is if you've never had a severe pain? So um, anyway, I'll let you know perhaps how it goes. But um, that's the story how, of how something so tiny can blow up into such a big pain in the arse and, and probably lose you a patient through no fault of your own. <clears throat> and I still don't know what's wrong with the, with the tooth. Uh, so... Um, as I say, 
we'll wait and see how, where, where she wants to go with it. If she comes back to see me, she's gonna have to stop micromanaging everything, and then she goes to see another dentist, then, uh, you know, then it's unfortunate and, um, and not what we wanted, but, but sometimes you don't always get what you want, do you, as Mick Jagger said. Right, I'll, um, nice to talk to you, I'll talk to you soon, bye.